Hello, welcome back to the Code Circus. Today we are going to look at adding video textures to our program as opposed to having just flat, plain picture textures. Uh, continue with the idea of multimedia. The first thing we're going to look at um, is adding in an animated GIF. This is a simple way to add in a texture to a object by adding in uh, just an animated GIF file instead of just a regular image. So we have all the same code we have for our sphere before, but now we have an animated GIF called Earth. Before I get to that also, I wanted to show you we have all the same code we had before about our walls and all that. If you don't want to do this room where you have the walls, you don't have to. You could really just start with a uh, collide world again and kind of put it in there or some other world that you have created and put it in there. So we're really going to just focus in on video today. So when I add in my first sphere, and I'm just going to make the texture that different file, the Earth file. And now if you look, this animated GIF includes a transition from daytime to nighttime. Oops, let me show you the code. That would be good. <laughs> Pardon me. So here's the code. Just an same code as we had before, only the sphere texture has um, a different texture name on it. The file is an assets earth.gif that I found. And when you run that, you can see our animated GIF shows the different um, phases of daytime and nighttime for our planet as it spins around. So it's just an animated GIF as opposed to a regular texture. So that's not all that cool, but it's, you know, I think it's a little interesting. We're going to get cooler. So the next thing I want to add in um, is I want to add in a video sequence that we're going to use a couple different times. I think I'm going to add that up here above our sphere. No, I'll add it below our sphere. There we go. So I'm setting a video, and this time I'm using the command dot add video rather than dot add. And it's specific to add video because it links it to what's called co video codex. And that is the ability for Vizard to play different video files normally on your computer. Your computer may not have all the correct codecs. So I have added a file inside of Canvas for you to download uh, the video codecs. Let me pull that up and show you. So it's just called K Light Codec Pack uh, 10, uh, 1698 Full. And it's an executable, just run and install it on your computer. And it will add all the necessary codecs to play all these video files on your computer. If you don't, then it's going to say it can't load the video. Uh, I've also included all the videos that I've used. The one video that's a little weird is the fire video. I had to put that in a Google Drive with a link to it. So when you download it, stick it in your assets folder, it's one gig. If you don't have enough room on your computer to do it, you don't have to download the fire video. You don't have to include that. It's just kind of a really um, fun example uh, of what you can do with video. Um, and you could probably find other videos that are similar to it, but uh, it's up to you whether or not you want to include that in your um, on your computer. So here's my video, sequence two. Uh, I'm going to loop it so it plays over to, over again. I'm going to set its speed to one, set its volume to point 0.1. We don't, I don't need it super loud. You can make it louder if you want. And then I'm going to make it play with a P and pause with a P. Notice it's very similar to the way we did sound. In fact, they're both part of the multimedia um, class and they're just really subsections. The difference is one just plays audio, the other one plays audio and video. So we have our video added. And now I gotta put my video on something. And let's put it on a picture box. And we're going to apply the video just like we apply a texture. And I'm gonna apply it to the back um, just so we can see it. Because I the way I positioned the picture, it turns out the picture is backwards, but We'll just apply it to the back, and I'm only a uh, split faces is true just like we did before. So we apply the video just like we applied a texture. I'm going to hit and start. And now we can see over here on the wall, we have what looks like a picture, but when I press P, 
it'll play my video and plays the sound that comes along with it. I have it really quiet, so you can't hear it real loud because it's just that ukulele sound. And I have the picture kind of tilted. Okay, so now we have our picture added just like a regular texture. We have it added to a sphere. We can also add it to those quadrilateral objects the same way we added other textures. Um, I'm gonna add the texture as video. So it's the same kind of quadrilateral object, only this time it's a video. And we look in our world and we can see it's over there on the wall. We got that one over there and the, it's the same video. So when I hit play, both videos will start playing at the same time. Now let's talk about um, a different kind of video. This really has to do with how you make the video um, not so much how you put the video inside of Vizard. So this video is a transparent video, which means you can see through the video while it's playing in some spots and other spots you can't. So if you have, for example, in this case, it's kind of a, um, like a fake uh, digital screen. I'm gonna put that up on the wall. So I'm just gonna add the screen.movie and I'm gonna play it equals one and loop it equals one. So that tells me that I'm gonna make it play and loop. Remember we talked about that? You can add those in line. We, instead of just doing the name of the video.play and the name of the video.loop, we can add those in line. Uh, we talked about that with the sound as well, same thing. And I'm gonna to add it to a quad so it doesn't have any dimension. And then um, I'm gonna set, oh, I kinda didn't need to do that. <laughs> I did it twice, but just to show you that you can do it either way. Um, loop viz.on and vid.play. So those are the two different ways of making it do it. But the important part here is the way the screen.movie was made, I did it in uh, Adobe Premiere, and you can do it in other places, but when you save it, you have to make sure you save it with something called alpha channel information. And if you look up how to do that in Premiere uh, or whatever video software you're using, if you're making your video with a transparent screen, you have to save it. One is a QuickTime movie. It has to be a .mov. It won't work with anything else. Um, nothing else is gonna recognize it as the transparency. And not only that, it has to have the alpha channel set with it. So you have to look at your settings when you're just exporting it, that it has that information. When it, if it has both, um, it's set as a QuickTime movie and an alpha channel, then it'll display it. The issue is they're huge files. So that fire file, which I'll show you in a minute, is a gig and it's only 15 seconds. So it is a huge file and it's only 15 seconds. So you gotta be kind of sparing how you use this. Um, you might be able to find some other video assets that uh, are a little bit smaller. You might be able to compress them a little bit, but Vizard has this kind of ability to only recognize MOV as transparency. And I think many pro programs can only recognize MOV. So it's not used very often, but here it is. Here's what it looks like. And you can see over here on the wall, now I have this kind of Star trek -y screen display that is has a transparent animation added to it. Uh, basically, essentially, it's a green screen, right? And I alpha channeled out the green screen, so I just have the video that I want. And because I sent along that alpha channel information, then Vizard is able to recognize that and not show the uh, rest of it. Okay. So let's add in, let's talk about our fire. Um, Cause this is fun. So I'm gonna create this fire pit. I'm gonna add it to a cylinder and the cylinder, I'm gonna split the faces and I'm gonna um, make the top false and the bottom false. <clears throat> so basically the top and bottom are invisible. Uh, and then I'm gonna make another one called Fire Pit 2 where I flip the faces. So what that does 
is that it puts the image on the back side of the cylinder. Because if we look at any of our videos, um, what really is happening, it's only on the front side of the shape. It's not on the inside of the shape. And in this case, we want it on the front and we want it on the back. So that way, uh, when we look at our fire, we're looking at, at it from both sides because it's transparent. If it was only on one side, it's gonna look a little odd. And I can show you what that looks like. And I'm going to set the texture for the fire pit to fire for both cylinders. And I'm going to make a, a loop and I'm going to play it. So if we look, and I, me being silly, I had to stick it around the globe. We can see our fire now burning around our globe. Now let me show you something about our video here. Let me go inside our globe and watch what happens. The globe looks like it disappears because we're inside looking out and there is no texture on the inside. So we can't see anything. So it's a little weird when you're on the inside of a shape and the inside doesn't have any texture. So we're gonna go back to the outside of it and we can see that it has a globe and there's fire around it. So if we're gonna have a shape that we could travel inside of, we probably wanna add a texture to the inside as well as the outside. So that way, um, we're not confusing people because it's a bit weird. So let's go ahead and do that. Let's create a box where we're going to put um, something on the inside and on the outside. So on the inside of the box, I'm going to add this video called Blue Box and play it. And then on the outside, on the excuse me, reverse that. On the outside of the video, I'm going to add this blue box. That's the outside, normal. The inside, I have to make sure I flip the faces of the box. So I'm putting another box in exactly the same spot. Notice the location is exactly the same as the first box. And um, when it plays the video, did I miss the box? Oh, I think I missed the box. Hang on, let me add the other box. Oh, no, I didn't miss it. It's right here. There we go. I just had them down below each other. Okay, so you can see they're exactly the same shape and position. They have to be the same shape and position, otherwise this isn't gonna work. And I made um, just the inside gray. And then I set the texture of the box outside to be the outside video, and the texture of the box inside to be the inside texture. And one is gonna play that video that we've been playing, and the other one is gonna play this kind of cool blue looking video. I'm gonna flip around and take a look at this. So we can see it's got this really cool, funky shape, blue thing going on. But then when I walk into the box, I now have a video box and I can play the video. And it'll play the same video it's been playing on the other screens. So now we have an inside of our box and an outside of our box. So that's, I think that's really cool. Okay, shift P pauses it, there we go. Let me close that. Okay, so let's go ahead and go back to our sphere and let's think about adding a video to the inside of our sphere so that when we go inside of our sphere and we're looking out, it's not going to be um, this weird thing where we're looking like it all disappears. So let me find that in our code. There we go, right up here at line 82. We had our original sphere and we're going to add a sphere that's exactly the same size and shape. And I'm going to do it this time in three different steps rather than doing it all one, just because I can. So I have this sphere now where I flip the faces. It has the same position as the other one. And it has, I set the scale to be 1, 1, um, 1. Notice this one is a little bit bigger, 1.1. 1. 1. I can make them exactly the same, but I, I made one a little bit smaller than the other one. Uh, the reason why is sometimes when you make them exactly the same, the, the two surfaces blend a little bit. So we just got to be careful of that. So I made them slightly different. And then I'm going to add a 360 video. Now, a 360 video is a video that's shot with a 360 degree camera and captures all the angles. You have to put this on a sphere. It's not going to work otherwise. Uh, there are two different kinds of videos um, that are processed. One is like a spherical shape, 
and one has a, does a double lens shape. The one we want is the one that is a spherical shape, where the lens it just looks like the same thing with the globe, where it's just kind of unfolded. Uh, the two lenses is one that works well for uh, some of the phone apps, where it shows one in one eye and one in the other one, and kind of tricks the eye. So we're not going to do that. You can do that by doing two separate spheres and putting the video on twice, but we're going to just put it on once on side of a sphere because this is what works with our VR headsets. And I'm gonna just play the video, and it has, um, add the texture and play the video. It does have a sound, which I find annoying, because once the video starts playing, uh, this particular video has a sound, and it's annoying. So I'm gonna set the volume to zero. I'll come back and I'll reset the volume, and you can see what I mean. And now we're just gonna play our program. And we have the same thing program we had before, but now I'm going to go into my sphere and watch the transition. There we go. I have to get down a little bit. And now, as I look around, I'm in a 360 video. And you can see that I have 360 degree view inside this video, which I think is pretty cool. Now, one of the things you can do with your 360 video is lock the person inside the sphere so they can't get out because, you know, I could easily move out of the sphere and it's a little disorienting to move in and out of the video. And if you're not exactly centered, it makes things look a little bit weird. So if you just want to do a 360 video, you can lock the person inside that video. And I've included the code to do that. Um, it's the same video where we flip the faces on the sphere. The, the difference is we link the main view to the sphere. Remember we talked about linking, where we link two things together. And we, so that way the, the sphere is always linked to the main view. And then we also import this thing called VizCam, which sets up panoramic camera navigation. And um, we put that in there and we can then do 360 video where you can't exit the 3D world. It's just the 360 video. But I kind of like the, the ability to go in and out of uh, the video inside the world. I think that's kind of fun. And actually, I meant to put the sound on for you. So let's see. This is the reason why I needed to take that sound off. You'll hear it now once it starts playing. You can actually hear the wind and the buzzing of the uh, quadricopter or whatever that is. I think it's got more blades than four. And if you're just looking at the video, that's cool. But if you're doing other things in your world and that video has some weird sound, you probably want to be careful about that and make sure you, you've adjusted the volume. Uh, you could also do a proximity sensor and make it so that way when the person enters let me stop that. When the person enters the, the sphere, that's when the video starts playing. And when they exit the sphere, uh, and you can put another proximity center, or center around the sphere, when they exit the sphere, it um, stops playing. Because remember, our proximity sensors could be spherical. They don't have to be boxes. So that is all the fun stuff we have for video. I will see you next time.